Are you sure no one else can come in for the big premiere today, sir? Of course I am, idiot. Now get to work. Okay, I'll be right on it. Ah, gotta uh, put down all these barriers here. Uh, put one there. Uh, put one over here. Ah, gotta put this light down here. And then right there. Yeah, that's good. And uh, another one here. Oh, darling, I can't wait for the premiere. Two tickets for the premiere, please. Ah, <laughs> uh, that'll be 30 Harry Potter coins, please. Why not take a hundred? Ah, uh, thanks. Don't worry, I was just going to use it as toilet paper anyway. Oh. Don't hold the door open, you silly fool. Ah, oh. uh, yes, yeah, sorry, sir. Right away. Oh my buttocks! Oh no, car! Oh, oh. oh dear. How many doors you get in this place? Eh, uh, a couple. I want you to hit him with every single one. Eh, uh, harming guests is against policy. Here's a hundred bucks. Do it. I'm terribly sorry, sir. It was not my intention. Don't worry, the money cushioned my fall. <laughs> uh, can we get going? I'm like, Tote's gonna miss my premiere. Heh, <sighs> heh. I was the real to get up here. But if I get one shot on that little brat, I'm gonna be rich. And I'm gonna get that shot if it kills me. Heh, <laughs> uh, sir, you're not supposed to be up there. Rich blocks of gravy! I gotta get out of here! Oh no! Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> what enough is that? Wait. I can't, the wheels are too teeny tiny. Oh, 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 I'm so fired. So, uh, is the movie going to start or what? Hello, I'm the Habit Hour, and welcome to another modular review. I hope you enjoyed that little silly short just then. Uh, it was mainly just a way of practicing uh, some lighting techniques and forced perspective and that sort of thing. Because if you follow me on Twitter, subtle plug. Um, you'll know that I want to get back into the old brick filming, so it was a bit of practice, but if you liked it, then I might do a similar thing for future reviews, I've got a few ideas. Uh, but anyway, on to the actual review itself, the Palace Cinema, uh, the 2013 modular, this is my third modular, the two being the Pet Shop and the Detective's Office. How many fingers am I holding up? Um, those two are uh, the smallest modular, so I, I was pretty blown away by the size of this thing. Uh, even though the detective's office has the most pieces second uh, to the town hall. Uh, but yeah, I'm really impressed with the size of this thing. I think for £120, it's a really good price. Uh, but we'll get more into comparisons and all that later. Let's just have a look at the detail on this thing. So, uh, given this a quick 360, uh, just like all the other corner buildings, it's very impressive looking. Uh, similar to the Grand Emporium, it has that very grandiose, impressive look. Uh, it, dare I say it's the most eye-catching of the modulars. I think if you had this on display with all the others, uh, people's eyes would really be drawn to this one. And I think that's partly because of the choice of colours used. You get this uh, beautiful roof. There's this really nice tiling effect, which is a pain to build, but it pays off because uh, it looks really cool. And uh, there's the pointed roof. I love uh, the architecture of it all. I think, I believe it's based off the Chinese theatre. Uh, so, and you can see all the lovely pointed angles, the daggers, even the touch with the Sensei Wu hat in the middle. Uh, just to add to that whole Asian aesthetic. Uh, the colours used on this main palace cinema sign uh, is really nice. That blue is really bold, how they use it. Uh, to a limited amount, so that it's all the more effective. Get that lovely brick-built lettering. If you've watched these reviews before, you know I love that brick-built lettering. All these lovely lights along the centre. Give it that serious classic feel. There's more lights along the bottom here. Uh, we get these windows along the edge. And just like all modulars, we have this problem where there's no actual glass in these arched uh, windows. I don't know why they haven't just done that already, I'm sure it wouldn't be that difficult and they would definitely be used a lot, so... Lego, why you no do that yet? Uh, they 
Modular series continues its trend of using uh, body parts of the dead to help decorate uh, their buildings. It's recycling, it's good for the environment. Down here, we have a ticket booth. The cl classic white lamppost. We'll get more into the ticket booth uh, when we go on the interior. You get a couple of things to go around the outside, if I just move the figs out the way, see them later. You get this fencing, once again using skeleton legs, recycling the dead. And these two spotlights, which use a sort of chrome dish underneath this transparent dish, which gives it that really nice reflective effect. You get two of those. Looking on the pavement, I love the smooth modular pavements, uh, sidewalks if you're American get these printed star pieces which were in the detective's office as well to simulate the Hollywood Walk of Fame and one of my favorite aspects are these awesome posters along here uh, most of them are just kinda Lego in-jokes but they really add to the whole feel I'm sure some people won't be happy that they're stickers uh, people do find it very difficult to do stickers especially bigger ones uh, but I think it was necessary here. Imagine printing a print that size, and it's on both sides, we'll see on the interior later. It's a window piece, and you just stick the sticker on either side. With all the colours, the size of the print, I think it would be very expensive. And the price of the set might go up to line of uh, £10 just because of that. My personal favourite is the brick separator, because I guess it's the Lego World's equivalent of Godzilla. Uh, but they also... I have one based on the infamous monorail set. Lego are aware of it, why don't they re-release it, dang it! On this area, we get the classic sort of thatching uh, light letter design. Uh, tickets and stuff. And then we get to one of my worst nightmares in Lego, and that's when you have two separate stickers that go on two separate pieces, but make one image, one design. And it's done on here, and it's very awkward looking. In fact, I'm probably going to tear it off. Uh, not tear it off, but swap out the pieces straight after this review. I didn't do too bad a job of it, I don't think, but uh, yeah, it doesn't look great. And then here we got this awesome angled door design. Of course, it's a corner building, uh, so you have buildings on either side. So the entrance is on a corner, and it's like these, uh, it uses a block trans piece. Really nice. I love the gold handlebars. Uh, it really adds to the class of the whole building again. I'm not sure if it's technically legal, this whole design, but it looks good, so why not? And then uh, we get a nice little pattern design. A bit more subtle than the Grand Emporium, but it still works. So overall, the front exterior is gorgeous. The back, on the other hand, uh, it's just blank. But what do you expect? You n no one's going to be looking at the back of the building anyway, it doesn't matter too much. But oh no, what's this? There's supposed to be a 1x8 brown here, uh, and obviously it's missing. And uh, yeah, it, it didn't come with the set, it wasn't in any of the bags, I didn't lose it, I didn't misplace it, I didn't build it wrong. And it happens occasionally with LEGO, I think it's only ever happened to me once with a Bionicle. Uh, but because I got this off LEGO online, I just uh, got in contact with customer service and they're sending me a free one in the post. But that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, something that is a problem with this design, however, is the back of this roof section is very ugly. you got all the exposed plates. I wish an effort was made to cover this up a bit. Because it, it really doesn't look nice to me. And it doesn't really make any difference, but this twists slightly just because of the way it's made. On here, you can see this door design. Just a sideways door, they did it on the fire station as well. Interesting design. And apart from that, it's very blank up here. Uh, they picture two of the minifigs sitting up here, and uh, the cinema employees, like, stalking, staring at them. Uh, <clears throat> moving on swiftly. And now, we're going to take a look at the weakest element of the set. The car! Everyone who has this set knows that the car kinda sucks. Uh, but it's not as bad as I thought it would be really. Yes, that angle looks awful. Uh, I think it's just the decision they did with the tiny wheels and the wheel arch. It just really doesn't work. And this kinda looks low down. Uh, but, I don't know. It looks much better with the figures in it. If I take the figures out, uh, it suddenly looks a lot worse. 
Uh, I do like some elements of it though. I like the folded roof effect done here. Um, and at some angles it does look good. That front angle looks good. I like the lines created here. Can I get you a good look at that? I like this line here, I think. That looks nice. I like how smooth it is. And yeah, from certain angles it does look good. It doesn't look too bad from the top. It's just when you turn it like that. Ugh. So I probably will tear this apart for spare parts when I'm done with it. Doesn't matter too much though, because who's buying this set for the car, right? Before we go into the interior, we're going to take a look at the minifigures. Starting off with probably the most boring figure in the set, the chauffeur. He's just got the basic suit, which we've seen a hundred times, and uh, a black police hat to make him look fancy. And, of course, he comes with a classic face, which if you've seen my city updates, subtle plug, subtle plug, uh, you'll know I love them. And to all the people who complain about the modular statues and the classic face, I say to you, where's your sense of style, man? And the chauffeur is tasked with driving minifigure, according to the sign. Get it, minifigure? Ha <laughs> ha And uh, she's a child actress, so she'll probably become a uh, Hannah Montana in a couple of years. Uh, she's got the nice purple dress there, which I haven't seen before, actually. And uh, it's pretty good looking. Purple. This figure is Dapper McDapperton. Uh, he's one of the cinema guests, or maybe he's in the film. I'm not sure. Uh, I think it's implied that he's one of the guests because he's carrying around money. Throwing around them dollar bills. Super rich. I really like the torso. It's very classy area appropriate. He's got the fog watch. Uh, it belongs to uh, uh, Lord Vampire from the Monster Fighters theme. Was it Monster Hunters? I'm not sure. All I remember about that theme is that they spelt vampire with a Y. Which is always a bit strange. But I really like the looks of this figure. He's got that gelled back hair. He really seems like that snooty kind of guy. So yeah, not, not too much to say about him. But he just fits the part. And then we got his date, I suppose. I say date because they uh, pictured chilling out on the roof with the cinema employee creeping on them. Uh, she may seem familiar because um, this is the figure from the pet shop, uh, which came out to which is the modular from 2011. So I'm not sure if these are supposed to be represented the same character. You can see they have different legs. Uh, but the fact that they're a year apart makes me think not, so I guess it was just laziness on Lego's part. But I think the torso kind of fits in here more than it did in that set. And it's a nice figure, but it would have been nice to get someone new, I think. Just take the hair off, you can see the rest of the print. It looks very medieval, which I guess isn't too arrow appropriate, but oh well. It's a cool torso nonetheless, and a cool figure. Next, we got the paparazzi guy. I really like the way this figure looks. Um, he comes with the brown pants, that uh, suit jacket that we uh, always see in the city sets. And I really like the um, tan fedora. That looks really cool. I always like getting the Indiana Jones hat in different colours. And this looks really appropriate. And he comes with a camera. Oop, knocked him off. Comes with a camera as the clear smooth tile. And I really like the looks of this figure. He looks cool to me. Nothing on the back. And that's the paparazzi guy. And last, but certainly not least, is the theatre employee. He uses the same torso and legs as Al's from Al's Barbershop. So uh, if you're lucky enough to have that set, uh, you can have two employees, which is cool, except I don't have a uh, blue police hat, so can't have them identical, unfortunately. Uh, but I do really like this figure. Uh, these You get two of these uh, one by one smooth tiles to represent tickets. The colours and everything, the bright colours, uh, it all looks very happy, it looks very Lego-y to me. I re always get a really vintage feel from this torso. Which I believe first came in a Spongebob set of all things, like uh, the ice cream fish had it. 
I like the blue cap, that also feels very vintage, and he just looks very innocent to me, very classic Lego. And as I just said, um, you, the biggest problem is the fact that you only get one of these guys. This poor guy has to run everything, the ticket stands, the concession stands, the, uh, the, the door, the proje projector. He has to do everything, poor guy. So I really wish they just gave us another one of these exact figures. That would have really uh, completed the figures for me, but uh, for the price, you get a really good amount of figures. Uh, how many did you get in the pet shop? Um, I believe you only got four figures in the pet shop, so you get six in this, which is a big step up, especially considering they're the same price. So I'm really happy with the figure selection as a whole. It's just a serious shame that we don't get another one of these awesome figures. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the bottom floor, or the first floor to all the Americans. And if I can get this blooming thing off, first thing you'll notice is BAM! Look at that vibrant red carpet. Yeah, this is on a red base plate, which I believe is unique to this set at the time of this recording. Uh, I think it was made just for this, and it really gives you that nice bright coloured feel. Uh, it feels very cinema to me. Uh, in the corner, we got the concession stand, and that looks really nice. You got that same blue used on the outside, which really uh, helps to stand out and identify things. Uh, you get the popcorn uh, case, which isn't too detailed. I would have liked that to be a bit bigger. Uh, a soda machine and a shelf with some stuff on it. Uh, some drinks of some kind, I think that's supposed to be. And uh, probably my favourite thing is just this bowl of sweets or candy or something like that. And you can see the other side of the posters in there. And here's the other side of the ticket booths. There's the first one, there's the second one. You get another one of those counters, which I really like. And you get this potted plant thing here, which is on a clear head. It's not much to it, but it's there. You get these really nice printed till pieces, even though it kind of goes against the actual error uh, that I think the set's attempting to replicate. Still isn't too bad. Uh, you can't fit people too well in that far one, uh, but they do just fine, the second one. And I wanted to show you how the ticket booth actually worked. So I wanted to show you this nice little detail that most people probably won't care about, but I like this small sort of thing. Uh, the way the ticket booth is designed, you got that uh, smooth slope there, and there's a tiny little gap, perfect for fitting your money through. So for Richie Much Muck Richardson, just pushes his money through there. Uh, ticket man can take it, and then give away his ticket. Uh, the other one by one tile is just on this side. Push that through, that's the other one. And there you go. And we also get these very nice stairs. It's got the smooth uh, tiles on it. I love smooth tiles. And then the brown banister looks nice. And just for extra detail, there's a little tree in the corner. The only problem I really have with this bottom floor is this big empty space here. It's screaming for something there. I think I might put a claw machine around here or something. But yeah, it just looks really blank and empty in that corner. But for the most part, I really like this floor. And let's go to the next one. Okay, so you come up the stairs onto the first floor, and uh, then you're right in the cinema room. That's a little strange. I'll get back to that in a second. But first, let me show you the actual cinema screen itself. You can just pull that off straight away to get a better look at it. And interestingly, uh, they've gone with a, a shaped sticker rather than an actual square. Uh, I'm th I imagine that's just because there's some law against having a sticker underneath Lego bricks. Uh, but it, it really doesn't look that great to me. I would have much rather just had it be square. It seems very unusual that the image has just been cut off like that. But hey, I suppose that's what it's like in the Lego world. You get this really nice curtain effect. And, uh, except for the sticker, I really like it. But of course, you can always just replace the sticker and project whatever you want on it, really. And that just connects onto there. They have that brick detail behind it for reasons. And then, 
you get the seats. You only get six seats, which is a little bit disappointing. And you get only six seats because you need space for the projectionist area. Doesn't this look bizarre? Doesn't this look so strange? Why Why is the projectionist in the room with them? Just chilling, watching the film. Uh, the actual projector mini build itself looks quite nice. It's basic, but it looks good. But why is he in the room with them? That shouldn't be like that. I guess the designer just wanted to incorporate all the features that you'd expect in a cinema. Uh, but it really doesn't work for me. I'm definitely going to tear that out when I'm done with it and maybe put another row in. Uh, of course, there's all the windows, so I guess I can only show the film at night. Maybe that's the way they did it back then, I'm not sure. Uh, but by far the most bizarre thing about this floor is the fact that the stairwell is just completely exposed to the cinema room. Now, that just doesn't happen, that doesn't work. And I think the best way to fix this would just be to put a wall along here with two entrances. Just put a wall here, and I think that would really help the effect, and then tear out the projection room. And then I think you'd have a n normal looking cinema room. Uh, for what it is, it isn't too bad, it's just everything's awkwardly placed just for the sake of fitting everything in. Uh, so. I think I need to do some heavy modification on this area, and then it'll look much better. And then of course the stairs from that room take you to the roof, which I've already covered. It's a little basic and uh, a little ugly. And here's a look at the spare pieces included in the set. You get a green brick separator which you don't any- oops. That you don't really get anymore. Now you just get these orange ones. And I think I like the green ones better actually. And. It's mostly just a lot of little pieces, but you also get some pretty significant pieces like these plates and this brick, which always makes me feel like I've left something out. Does anyone else have that feeling? The build time was roughly under five hours. I say roughly because it was Easter Sunday when I built it, so I was constantly getting up to say hi to family members, etc, etc. Uh, the build wasn't particularly difficult, the roof was a little bit tedious as I said earlier, but I did learn a lot of new techniques, which is one of the great strengths of the modular buildings. And here it is, alongside the pet shop and half of the detective's office. And as I predicted, it looks fantastic and very eye-catching. Keep in mind the curbs will match up on yours. And there we go, another modular finished. And uh, I was very keen to get this review out of the way because I can't wait to dig into modifying this thing. And yeah, if you're willing to do the modifications and you've got the pieces for it, then this is an awesome set, especially... Uh, to some people who might think they're getting even more worth out of it for getting the opportunity to modify it. A lot of people are disappointed in this set and I really can't understand why. The exterior is beautiful and the only real negative I can think of is the car. And yeah, the car's rubbish but who's buying it for the car? You're buying it for the building. The car's just kind of a nice bonus or a rubbish bonus. Uh, the second floor is a little bit odd uh, but I feel like they did what they needed to do and I don't see any way Lego could have actually improved it because you kind of restricted with the size. Uh, so yeah this is this is a great modular and uh, not my favorite I think the pet shop still holds that medal uh, but if you're willing to modify it definitely pick it up it is fantastic. Fantastic! 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 You may notice that I've changed the format slightly of this review. I'm trying to get my reviews a bit faster, get rid of the rambling, and, and I think with a bit more polishing, uh, it could improve my reviews significantly. So let me know in the comments if you even noticed it, and uh, if, you, if you liked it. Also, the little show at the end took a lot of editing, even if it was silly and goofy. So let me know if you liked that as well. And let me know if you've liked the set. Let me know a lot of things. My ego could always use a boost. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Probably a city update actually showing you this. Bye bye.